Why is it so hard to add grand totals to a simple bar chart in Excel native charts? How often do you perform budget to actual variance analysis and present slides resembling this one to the management team? How often have you had to make last minute changes that involve copying and pasting all of your Excel charts into PowerPoint? Hi everyone, I'm Dave. I've been an FPNA manager for more than five years. And in today's video, I'll show you how to fix the top five Excel FPNA challenges with Zebra BI. Number one, budget versus actuals variance analysis using pivot tables dynamic comments. Every quarter as an FPNA manager, I have to analyze my budget versus actuals by department and category. We all know how frustrating it is to do our monthly variance analysis using pivot tables. One reason it is frustrating it is because how terrible it looks. This visual doesn't help anyone when it comes to data insight. It is also very important to show comments on our analysis, whether it's we're undergoing an accounting audit or we want to answer our boss question about these variants when it is time to make the board presentation every quarter. But what's really frustrating with the pivot tables is whenever you make changes to your pivot table, let's say we remove the category by instance, then our comments don't follow. And as soon as we touch anything on our data, our comments are actually gone. As soon as we change items from place to place, then our comments just don't follow. So how frustrating it is. I'll show you one way to fix this. First, let's go back to this tab here, challenge one Excel, and then go back to our data set. Let's make a new pivot table. Let's click on insert at the top in the ribbon then click on pivot table and make sure this box right here, add this data to the data model is actually checked. So we check this and then we click OK. And then we can do a normal pivot table. We just drag the department in the rows, the category in the rows as well. And then we're going to put our comments as a value. And in value, we're going to put the actuals and the budget. All right, so that's not really clean, is it? I see the count of comments here. So let's try putting them as a row instead. And I have something like this, not really beautiful. I have blanks everywhere. So let's try to fix this real quick. The first thing I'll do is I'll go to my design tab. So I click on my pivot table and then click on the design tab at the top. And then what I'll do is I'll put the report layout to tabular form. Here we go. We have something a little bit more insightful here, but I still have the comments that are really annoying. It is showing as blank. So I'm just going to remove the comments for now. Here we go. Drag it there and boom, we have our actuals and our budget as a pivot table right now. And now to add the comments, what I'll do since I changed this to a data model, I will click here on my table, which is called range for now and I will add a measure. Now I have this box that pops up and I will name my measure commentary underscore for the boss. Here we go. And then for the formula, I will make sure to use the formula concatenate X. And then the first argument that I want is actually to put my table. So my table is called range. Here we go, double click on range. And then the second argument is to get our comments filled into this range comments and double click on this, close parenthesis, make sure the formula is okay. And this formula has no error. So what we just did actually is to transform this comment so we can use it as a value. And then I have a new field that just appeared here in my pivot table field. And then I drag it down to the values. So now I have everything I need to use my Zebra BI add-in for tables. I'll just click on my pivot table, go to add-in, and then click here in the add-in Zebra BI table add-in. Click here. It is loading and a boom with a single click. I have a great pivot table with my dynamic comments. So let's say this salary comments here is changing. I'll just go back to my data set on challenge one Excel tab here, and then I'll change this comment right here. You should book the like button on this video because 
this is an amazing trick here we go we go back to our sheet and then we'll just actualize our pivot table refresh boom and here we go we have our comments here you should boop the like button on this video because this is an amazing trick so let me ask you real quick which slide will you rather present to your team when it comes to your budget to actuals variance analysis the one on the left or the one on the right that automatically updates with your comments number two adding grand total to bar charts as an FBNA manager, I think my favorite chart in Excel is this one, the stacked bar chart. But I never understood why it was so hard to add the grand totals at the top of my bar charts. If I had to do this normally in Excel, what I will have to do is actually select my data. So I have my headcount evolution here. And what I will need to do is actually make sure I include my total here in my data set selection. I will have something like that. My total is popping in purple here and this graph doesn't make any sense. So what I will have to do is click on my chart, go into chart design in the ribbon and actually change the chart type. I will click here. And then what I will do is actually click on combo and I will scroll down to my total line and I will check here the secondary axis, make sure this is a line and all of the other series, I will make sure that they are set as stacked column. Here we go. And then I will just click okay, right? So now I have my ad count evolution and then I will have to right click and add my data labels on top here on my purple line. Then I will right click on my series and then click on format data labels and then make sure the label position is set to above and then click on my purple line. Once again, go to format and then on the shape outline, I will actually put this to no outline. And finally, I will have my total here that I can put to bold and I can go to my legend down here and delete the total boom and delete my right axis. I really do think this is a struggle and I will show you how you can do it with Zebra BI in half of the time and way less struggle than this. So I'm going to my other tab here, challenge to Zebra BI. I have the same data set and here I can just delete my total real quick and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this data is a table so I'm going to select my data go to insert in the ribbon click on table and then make sure you check my table has headers down here I will click on OK. My data is now a table and we will go into Power Query and don't worry this is very 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 simple Click on your table, go to data and then click from table slash range in here. This will open Power Query. So we're going to just unpivot our data real quick. In order to do that, you just select all of your columns with the shift key. Shift click, right click on your data and just click here on unpivot columns. Here we go. We have our data as a tabular form. We click X. You want to keep your change. Keep. And now we actually have a staffing plan that makes sense data wise. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to make a pivot table based on this data here. Click on insert pivot table and select existing worksheet. And we're going to do our pivot table right here. Here we go. And we're going to put the value in the values <laughs> and the attribute, which is actually the date as a row and the department as a column. And now all we have to do is to make sure we remove these totals in the design tab. Click on grand totals of four rows and columns. So now we have a data set that makes sense. And all we have to do, click back on your table, go to the ohm ribbon, and then we're going to go in our add in zebra bi chart and we get a small multiple charts but let's switch it over and then we click at the top here on the little arrow 
and then on this chart here and here we go we have our results so we have a chart with way more insights we have our totals which are now super great looking and we even have more insight here we have a calculation change between the month of august and july we can see that we dropped our headcount from 27.6 percent and i didn't ask anything everything was just built in into the Zebra BI add-in. On top of that, there is a very interesting feature that can add to your storytelling. If I want to highlight the R&D department headcount evolution by instance, because this is this one that has the most movement, we just click here on the label, on the little arrow, and then click on highlight. As you can see, all of my numbers become blue and it is much easier to do storytelling now. Number three, present meaningful financial statements analysis. We've all presented data to a management team that looks like this. Tons of numbers, no one know where to look. Every member of the executive team are super busy and are not in the daily financial analysis like us but we often show hundreds of numbers that finally just look like a giant sudoku <laughs> it should not be hard to illustrate your point in 2024 especially with the tech stack that we can get or we can have access to with excel if you will want to bring this income statement to live by showing it visually you will probably struggle right you will just click here insert and maybe you would try to do a bar chart or even a waterfall chart and it will give something like this right it's not really clean but to be honest with you you will never get out alive if you just try doing charts on your tables like this in native excel now we'll show you with zebra bi how easy it is to show the variation from previous year to current year all you have to do is to make sure your data is set as table and then you go in the home ribbon under add-in and then you will click on the zebra bi table with just a single click i have this current visual this current visual might not be what I actually want. So let me do a few clicks to make this a little bit cleaner. So I will start by hiding this column here, the percentage of variation, because I don't want it right now. I just click on the little arrow here and I will hide the column. Other than that, what I want to do is to actually show a vertical waterfall income statement. So what I'll do here is I'll just click on the little arrow in the settings and I'll go here under calculation waterfall. And here we go. We have my actual year that has a waterfall and we'll do the same for the prior year calculation waterfall but right now how my chart is set as you can see i have an advertising expense here that is 765k less so that is supposed to be green because we have less cost so actually what i'll do i'll go under my expense here i'll right click and i will make sure to click on invert all children this way, all of my expenses became negative, And now we can see that this is actually a positive variance. So I have 765K more in my pocket because I have less expense here. Now, as you can see, I have a total expense of 1.3 million and I had sales revenue of 800K, which makes my operating profit minus 455k and to show the totals here the only thing i did is actually right click and make sure my operating profit is checked as a result you can do the same thing with the profit before tax you just click on result here and same thing for the profit after tax you check result and make sure all of your other expenses are actually negative let's say you would want a more summarized executive version of this income statement analysis you can just come here and click on these arrows to collapse the view of your income statement so we have now two beautiful waterfall charts and you have to remember that this is where you show your added value as an fpna analyst visuals help non-finance professionals understand what to do and which lever to pull to actually move the needle let's say we want to add a comment here to the sales product a we say super great sales during black friday 
so here we go we have a comment here of my sale product so make sure you use these visuals and the extra comment from zebra bi to prove your point and bring insights to the table number four change your charts in seconds and make them look great i have sales data here in excel i have my date my actuals my forecast and my plan I have to make sure that my actuals values are actually empty when we are not there yet in the year. And with Excel, it will be really complicated to actually have a clear visual of all of this. We could try by inserting a chart and we'll have something like this that doesn't really tell any insights. We could try moving things around by swapping the chart type. Let's say my plan could be a line and the others could be clustered column like this. We have something a little bit better, but once again, we'll have to adjust our axes and get many, many more headaches from simply analyzing our sales variations, right? So I'll show you what we can do with Zebra BI. I'll just select my data here and once again, go into the add-in and simply insert a Zebra BI chart. This is what we get as the default chart, but that's not what I actually want. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And when I mouse over my chart and I go over here, I can quickly swap between some different type of charts in a matter of seconds. I will click a few times and I want to show you this one right here. How beautiful is this one? Quickly at the top here, we have a percentage of variation from the plan versus the actual from the first month by instance we add a plan of twelve thousand dollars and now we have actuals of twenty one thousand dollars so zebra bi simply calculated the delta here plus 9k it is a green variant i want to show you something else though you see in the back here behind those dark gray bars we actually see our plan but what happens when we get to the month of october as you notice here our actuals are empty for october so zebra bi actually detects that it is the part of the forecast now because there is no actuals as you can see we have this gray zebra bar here that shows 15,000, which is actually the forecast and the plan is behind this showing nine thousand dollars and our delta here is actually zebra as well and is showing 6k which means our forecast is actually six thousand more than the actual plan Let's say we have a change actually and our December 2024 is not 25,000 but we'll revise it to 20,000 and I want you to have a look to the very right here. We click enter and here we go my calculation automatically updated here to the right. Let's have a look to the next chart type here. This one right here which is a stacked area and in a matter of second we can see that the month of April was below expectation and the other months are higher than expected. Once again, our forecast starts in October. We can see the visual that is really different for the forecast, which is easily recognizable and actually much more easy to show insights to the team. Once again, if I change it back my December to 30,000, we can see that it auto updates on the chart right here. We also have a few options to change our visuals. If I click on the arrow here, click on the cog, and then we can change the style here. We can go with the Power BI style. We have changed colors right now. We also have other styles such as the colorblind friendly and many, many other styles. There are also some other type of charts that I won't go deep over it, but just to let you know that it is much easier than in Excel. Imagine doing all of this in Excel, how long it will take. It will take ages and a lot of headaches. Number five, link your charts to PowerPoint. Goodbye, copy pasting. Before every board meeting, I finalize my analysis and charts, but transferring them to PowerPoint is time consuming, especially with inevitable last minute changes. 
I will always remember the Friday before a board meeting that was held on Monday when the VP of sales told me, Dave, we need to change the whole forecast. As an fp &A analyst or manager, your main goal is not to copy paste chart, it is to do analysis and to actually enjoy what you're doing. So with the Zebra BI add-in in PowerPoint, it is really easy to bring your dynamic charts from Excel to PowerPoint in just a few clicks. As you can see here, this is the chart that we saw earlier. And if I click here, I can have the same visuals as I do have in Excel. So let me show you how to bring your charts over and make sure they're linked and there are no mistakes from your Excel file to your PowerPoint. So I'll just create a new slide here and I will click on the add in and select Zebra BI charts. Make sure that your Excel file is hosted in SharePoint or OneDrive. I will select my column chart here, click, and then I will click link data to Excel. I have this menu that pops and I will select my file in my OneDrive. And now once I click, I see all of my tables from my Excel file and I will select the challenge five table underscore final. I will click on fetch data. And as you can see here, I have my chart and I just click here on the arrow and I have the chart that we actually looked together. The only thing I added is the comment. If I go to my Excel file at the top, as you can see, I have the same numbers. I just added comments. It will be really complicated in Excel if by instance, I will change my forecast of December and I will put 20,000 in there. When I go back to PowerPoint on my first slide, my chart actually updated. We see here 20,000, but my comment at the bottom is no longer relevant. So my forecast is not 30,000 anymore. It is 20,000. So I have to make sure my comments are all updated on every slide and it is very, very risky for mistakes. If I go back to my Zebra BI charts, I don't have this problem anymore. If I click on the arrow here, I can just go on my table and actually change my data right here in my table. I will click 20,000. Here we go. And I will change the comment. I will say, this is a new forecast. I will press enter. And if I go back to my chart here, I have my comment that updated automatically here. This is a new forecast. And as you can see, my 20,000 here as a forecast is also updated. I can also make the changes in Excel. I will go back to Excel and I will swap my comment here for December 2024 to this comment here. I will save my file, Control S. I will go back to PowerPoint and click here on the arrow, click on the table and press on refresh data. Here we go. My comment here, number five as updated, subscribe to the Zebra BI YouTube channel right now because you want more of these tricks. I hope you see what I did there. And I think this is a wonderful tool to make sure that your PowerPoint are always in line with your data and you don't have mistaken information on your slides. So now at 5 p.m. when there are changes, click on a few buttons and then you can enjoy your weekend. You can download Zebra BI for free and use it for 14 days. The link is in the description below this video, along with the Excel file that was used during this video. I'll see you in another video.